Today on Logan Lee Adventures, we head to the upper echelon neighborhood of Buenos Aires and Recoleta. Known for Paris style townhouses, lavish former palaces, and posh boutiques, and the Museum Mile, Recoleta, which is a traditional upper class neighborhood, drips in its affluence. Strolling the streets of Recoleta, I mean, you can prop me in the middle of this neighborhood blindfolded or you can pop me in the middle of Paris and I wouldn't know the difference because literally they look exactly the same like the architect the French architecture here the wide boulevards the beautiful scenery of trees just lined up the streets it's it's the same the material the the Argentinians here literally call it Paris material like Paris material Paris stone because they import it from France itself and it's the exact same architect, architecture and material to build these magnificent buildings. Just walking along Avenue de Libertador which is one of the biggest avenues in Buenos Aires and it's going through Recoleta to Palermo Chico and of course you've been seeing all these beautiful French architecture, very Parisian everywhere and of course I've been pointing them out because they're just so gorgeous along with like little details of buildings like oh, I don't know these wonderful casual curves and look at this I swear it looks it could be so like European here look at this so this is the big avenue that I'm talking about really great this is a bike path so that's why i'm looking out bike path look at this and of course along all down this avenue are stunning trees that gives us this wonderful shade so you may be wondering because i was wondering and then i had to ask my friend sato who lives here why like why the french architecture why the uh, like if you travel in Latin America and other cities in Latin America there are you know a lot of Spanish colonial architecture and that's the main architecture which is understandable right because Spain these were colonies of Spain Spain colonized this <laughs> but and to answer that question why there's all these Parisian French architecture everywhere it's because you know when Spain like originally Argentina well, Argentina the location of Argentina is just too far away back then when France when Spain was colonizing Latin America where it became Latin America so they colonized Peru they colonized parts of Chile they started up you know like where Colombia is first and then those countries got developed and then by the time that Argentina started to become developed well it wasn't you know they had all this space but the Spanish by then didn't develop Argentina well enough and then the British came and when the British came they started to do a lot of trading with the local population here so what was Argentinian population at that time so through trading with the British the country became richer and richer and at one point apparently Argentina was one of the top five richest countries in the world at the turn of the 19th slash 20th century so if you think about it, that's like they were higher they were richer than Germany and Japan countries like that like which is mind-blowing so with all this money coming into the country there was at that time I believe it was like Napoleon time as well so French everything French was regal everything French was chic everything French was you know like what you wanted and a lot of the wealthy upper class Argentines they travel to Europe a lot travel to France a lot and they saw this beautiful architecture and they want to bring that lifestyle bring that 
architecture and beauty back to Argentina and because they had all this money they can commission the French architecture living here the French architecture to build architects to build these places I mean for example this street sign right here it's an advertisement sign that's how beautiful and regal the ad the sign the billboard for the ad is hosted in From Avenue de Liberator, it's a quick walk to Floralis Generica, which is this flower sculpture here. There was a gift from an architect to the city of Buenos Aires, and actually, this is supposed to open and close according to the sun. So I think sunrise, the flower like opens and blooms up, and then closer it is to the evening or sundown, the flower closes down or this up, which is really cool feature another thing that I just love about the city is the amount of green space here like this is right beside look at this beautiful pond that the sculpture is built on and then all of this green space that you can just chill read a book have a picnic in Welcome to the university where I take my Spanish course, the University of Buenos Aires. But alright, to be fair, this is the law faculty at UBA, so <laughs> that explains this gigantic, very Roman-esque, gives you that feeling of justice and law behind the architecture because I'm sure my Spanish course is not the the building is not the same for arts <laughs> but still the campus is all over the city and a lot of the campus of UBA is in Recoleta and as you can see the architecture is gorgeous here I always like crossing this pink bridge from the law faculty building because, wait for it, it has impeccable views of the law building itself, yes, but also this avenue, like stretching all the way from Recoleta to Palermo. So it connects all this neighborhood down this huge path. When people think of Recoleta, this neighborhood, you know, you think of posh, you think of the high society, but you also, strangely enough, think about this place. And this place is a cemetery. I know, it's a cemetery. We're going to go in and explore it, which may sound odd to some people, but for those here who have been to Buenos Aires or have heard about this, this is not just any ordinary cemetery. And actually a large origin of the neighborhood started on the grounds where we're at right now. I know it doesn't even look like a cemetery right now on the outside, but trust me. And it's also not just any ordinary cemetery. Trust me on that. Stunning. It also says rest in peace right there. 
First of all, this is no ordinary cemetery. It's literally six blocks, okay? It takes up, this is like some city's neighborhoods. So you can see how organized it is with like avenues, lanes, Some of these mausoleums are as big as cottages here, seriously. And it's lined up like what I was talking about, like avenues just down here and all along this whole city of the dead, basically. The grave of Evita Perón is one of the most visited tombs of the cemetery of Recoleta. In fact, it's usual to find fresh flowers laid here for her. She was the first lady of Argentina from 1946 until her death in 1952, and Eva Perón got involved, very involved in politics, and defended the socialist cause. So she was much beloved by a lot of Argentinians, but also was very controversial and just as much as beloved was the very opposite for a lot of people in Argentina as well and she on top of that spoke on behalf of labor rights and she championed women's suffrage and ran the women's Peronist party here it is people come and pay their respect to Eva Peron of course but they also leave their flowers here which is really sweet so you can see that still to this day what a symbol she is and how iconic and full of meaning she is for the people here. So when I said earlier that Recoleta basically kind of originated from here, started from here, is because of the Franciscan order that moved here. So this is the first spot. And then the name originated, Recoleta originated from this Franciscan order here. And then afterwards, followed with yellow fever, the rich and the powerful families of Buenos Aires moved from San Tamo and like the city center to here. And those wealthy noble families, well, they stayed here ever since. And then now Recoleta is known what it is today. Okay, real talk. This is my favorite museum in Buenos Aires, given it is, after all, the most well-known museum in all of Argentina, but that's for a good reason. It houses more than 700 19th century European masterworks by the likes of Van Gogh, Rodin, Monet, Chagall, Goya, Rembrandt. Yup, the masters of the masters. I was shook myself because I didn't have any expectations and admissions is even free. And when I stepped into one room after another, it was a visual feel east here. So aside from the European legacies, the Bella Arts Museum also holds the largest collections of Argentinian artwork in the world, with works from the Middle Ages up through the current times, with international artists also featured. From an extraordinary artistic heritage, making it the largest public collection in Latin America, I can't wait to come back here time and time again while living in Buenos Aires because this place deserves your time to just leisurely stroll through and soak up the masterpieces in its collection. So since it's free admission year round, it's easy to just pop in whenever you're free. Now this is Recoleta, right? Remember that. So there's art galleries, fancy little shops everywhere up and down the neighborhood. In the middle of Recoleta is UVA's engineering building and I have a little love affair with this building because I am in love with anything gothic architecture and these arches. What 
awesome cultural, architectural gems one after another in this city. Now we're gonna have dinner at La Rambla, which is this old world cafe slash restaurant. It's more of a restaurant in the heart of you know, posh neighborhood here. It's well high-end respected and they're known for their steak sandwiches, which I'm gonna order it and then you're gonna see because this is like the type of sandwich before burgers were brought or invented in Argentina and so they had it in like the sandwich but like a massive steak in the middle. I can't wait to order it. Okay, what does it taste like? Bitter. Bitter? Very, very bitter. <laughs> He's right, I wouldn't like it. <laughs> It is like medicine. That is medicinal, my friend. Look at our meals. Oof. Oof. It has arrived. Oh, oh my. When I tell you the food scene in this city is out of this world. This sandwich means business. It's not any regular sandwich as you can see. It's literally a huge piece of fat juicy steak in the middle of crunchy bread and red peppers. So this is called a lomo porteño because it's a traditional Argentine sandwich but not just Argentine sandwich but like from the city, from local Bueno Aires for the locals, for tenuous. And I'm gonna try this out because it looks humongous. Mm. Okay, kinda has the same meat. How nice is it? It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the proper way to do Buenos Aires. And I'm here in Recoleta on the weekend now and right here in Plaza Francia where it was empty during the weekday but here right now on the weekend is the arts market so we're going to check it out because look at all these stalls it's so cool all these like vendors oh it's arts artisanal clothing as well some coffee jewelry all right we have a little bit of everything here so I'm meeting up with my friend Connor and he says this art fair that happens on that this art fair that happens on the weekend they're all vendors that got vetted so they can't just be any vendors they have to be like good quality art good quality artisanal craftsmen as well So many cool pieces everywhere. Like stalls after stalls of different artists, of different styles, and it just keeps going on and on. Extended from all the way from Plaza Francia all the way to Recollector Cemetery. Has taken over Recoleta. So cool! Everything here at the cultural center in Recoleta is free of access to, which is pretty awesome to see how, like. The cultural ministry just put this on and it's available to everybody.
Literally step into a world of imagination. So what I find so interesting is that the Recoleta Cultural Center was built in 1732 and this building was originally the convent of the Recoleta monks from which the Recoleta neighborhood took its name from. Remember also the church beside the cemetery and then it later served as a hospital, military barracks, refuge for the homeless and an elderly people's homes. It was then finally transformed into this cultural center that it is now at the end of the 1970s with renowned architect Clorindo Testa overseeing the this whole refurbishment mixing Italian night and modernist influence with the original colonial design and it's cool that this center now is part of the museum mile which includes the Bella Arts Museum which I showed you at the beginning of the Recoleta Adventures but it just fascinates me and inspires that in the city that this city set aside so much resources to make and keep these institutions free and accessible to the public it's rare for a city to do and have that these days but in Buenos Aires art and culture is such a big fixture of life here and what the city is so it's available to everyone no matter what your social economic background is and that's something i dearly respect in love with this exhibition in love with how there's so many things to do in the city and that are free so they have rotation of artists and exhibition here frequently as well. I hope you can get some sense of what makes Buenos Aires so special to me in these vlogs and why I chose this city to be the first city I wanted to move to and remote work in because seriously, some people only come and explore Buenos Aires for like 3 days tops before hopping around to other places in Argentina but I just find this capital to be so vibrant and full, packed full of life with so much to offer that whether it's 3 days or 1 week here is just not enough for me Before I wrap up this adventure in Recoleta, leave me a comment below on what you think of this high society neighborhood. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because of course I'm going to take you to another corner of Buenos Aires in the next video. I'm actually so shocked at how much space and things there are to see and do in this center. There's tons of different courtyards that you can grab a coffee, chill in, with tons of art all around. This one is dedicated to hip hop. It's been going for so time. When it's so, so. No